Greetings from the Philippines world. It's September 1, 5.05 p.m. here in Manila. And we are on Facebook Live on Eagle News. And also watch this video on eaglenewslive.com. I am Cesar Vallejos. We are open for business. Join me, discover the latest news and information in business around the world. Stay ahead of the curve from vision to action. The peso is 53.56 against the dollar. And at the closing of trade yesterday, the Philippine Stock uh, Exchange Index closed at 7,855.71, up 2.55 points or 0.03%. In today's marketing, events are no longer regarded as simple add-ons to a marketing strategy. In fact, some design it as the centerpiece of their overall business campaign. As a tool for strategic marketing and brand communication, it is used by companies, big or small. And as Fiera de Manila said in its website, the proliferation of events to introduce and promote products and services led practitioners to take a closer look at the science of event management as a multidisciplinary field of study. Experts now establish the discipline as a mainstream profession. Dissecting how events must be planned and executed in our, is our topic today and how it fits in the brand building, marketing, and communication strategies of the company. What are the secrets of an effective events management? Later this afternoon, we will talk with an expert who has been training, helping, and guiding events managers and professionals from various industries all over the country. Before we talk with the Vice President of Fiera de Manila, Ms. Norilyn Papiera, let's take a look at these business stories we have seen published this week. Ten loan agreements to be finalized during Chinese President's visit in November. Ayala Healthcare to expand Generica and its clinics by 2020. Farmgate price of Palai continues to rise. Faster economic growth seen this semester. And Facebook crawls out video service worldwide. Here are the details. Ten loan agreements to be finalized during Chinese President's visit in November. At least ten loan agreements for infrastructure projects will be signed when Chinese President Xi Jinping visits the Philippines in November, Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno said. According to Jokno, if the project gives a rate of return of at least 10% or higher, then it's a go because the government can borrow at, at a much lower cost. A loan from China was already extended to the National Irrigation Authorities for point. 4 billion Chico River pump irrigation project. So far, the Duterte administration has signed only one Chinese loan agreement worth 3.14 billion agreement for the irrigation facility, the first flagship infrastructure project to be financed by the mainland under the ambitious Build, Build, Build program. Besides the Chico River irrigation, the other projects included in the first basket for Chinese financing are the new Centennial Water Source Kaliwa Dam, the Philippine National Railway South Long Hole, as well as the Binondo Intramuros and Estrella Pantaleon Bridges crossing Pasig River. NEDA documents earlier show that 18 projects and programs worth a total of 731.7 billion would be rolled out through loans and grants from China. Ayala Healthcare to expand Generica and its clinics by 2020. Ayala Healthcare Holdings announced its plan to expand its retail health network and primary care facility with more than 1,000 Generica drug stores and around 100 family dog clinics by the next couple of years. With almost 800 outlets at present, Generica Drug Store is co-owned by the health arm of Ayala Corporation with the Ferrer family. AC Health President and CEO Paolo Borromeo said some of the 200 plus outlets to be opened will be through franchising. Family Doc is a wholly owned unit of AC Health that combines the services of a clinic, a diagnostics facility, and a pharmacy. Currently, it has a total of 40 clinics located in Laguna, Cavite, Paranaque, Taguig, Pasig, Pateros, and Las Piñas, all serving over 157,000 unique patients today. AC Health is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Ayala Corporation and serves as the portfolio company for its healthcare businesses. 
farm gate price of palay continues to rise. The Philippine Statistics Authority said in a report that the average farm gate price of unmilled rice reached a new record in the second week of August. The average farm gate price of unmilled rice rose for the third consecutive week in mid-August and reached a new all-time high of 22.28 per kilogram according to data from the Philippine Statistics Authority. In its report, the PSA disclosed the latest average quotation of palay in the second week of August was 13.5% higher than last year's 19.63 pesos per kilogram. The figure was also 0.63% higher than the previous week's average farm gate price of 22.14 per kilogram. Farmers said that the increase in the average farm gate price of unmilled rice is due to the continuous hike in its, their production cost. Traders were also buying palay at higher prices due to the low-rise stockpile of the National Food Authority, according to industry sources. Economic growth can be expected to pick up this semester, though it may be nowhere near the 7.7% 7, 7 needed for gross domestic product to hit the lower end of the government's 7 to 8% full year target, according to the latest joint assessment of First Metro Investment and the University of Asia and the Pacific. Suffer so inflation expected towards the end of 2018 in the wake of recent consecutive policy tightening the by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas could help support GDP expansion, they added. FMIC and uh, UANP said they expect growth to recover after the underwhelming 6% expansion clocked in April to June, marking the slowest pace in three years. The Philippine Statistics Authority attributed the deceleration to a slowdown in consumer spending as well as a contraction in exports and flat farm output. They jointly see inflation hitting 5.9% in August before settling down to 5.2% in September and 5% come October. Facebook said it is rolling out globally its watch video service, which has already been available in the United States for more than a year. Facebook launched Watch Amid a shift in video viewing habits away from traditional television to online platforms including Netflix and Hulu with more people watching both professional and user content on services like YouTube. Facebook has been wrapping up its video offerings with original shows and this week announced new formats including interactive game shows, quizzes, and polls. The announcement comes two weeks after Facebook revealed it would broadcast for free Spanish top flight division football matches in the Indian subcontinent and Champions League matches in Latin America. Facebook is hoping instead that videos made by users themselves are what will keep people watching. It's going to be an interesting conversation as Norilin Babiero of Fiera de Manila joins us when open for business returns. Keep watching. <music> for business. Our guest today has organized trade shows, exhibitions, conferences, seminars, and corporate events for the last 22 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Norilyn Babiera. Miss Norilyn, thank you for coming. Yeah, so delighted to be okay. here. Okay, so um, we know that events, uh, marketing events management is uh, 
being used by a lot of companies, big and small. And uh, somehow it is now uh, the centerpiece of uh, business uh, corporate uh, goals and uh, um, strategies and action plans of major mm -hmm. companies. But that wasn't the idea before. Events were just events. So how can you describe the transformation of events uh, 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 two decades uh, mm -hmm. before? Because I know Graphic Expo, which is one of the leading um, uh, events uh, expos in the country. So how do you describe the transformation of events management? Okay, I think, um, first of all, uh, the business landscape has really changed. Mm -hmm. And we used to have traditional marketing. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the changes in technology and many other developments, a lot of us marketers mm -hmm. are now really looking at uh, events mm -hmm. as a strategic communication tools mm -hmm. in the way we're going to promote our brand and our products and services. Mm -hmm. And because of technology, um, they have taken a look at events, a lot of mm -hmm. it are brands and uh, products and services really. Uh, they have taken a look at, at, a serious look at events and how uh, it has multifaceted uh, promote and uh, sell products and services. So in events, mm -hmm. um, you had the opportunity, you have the opportunity to, pro to, to promote your products. Mm -hmm and at the same time have a face-to-face -face, mm -hmm. uh, selling directly to your target audience or to your buyers or to your customers. Mm -hmm. Norley, several uh, years ago, we noticed that uh, there are really no uh, events planners, events mm -hmm. managers, so it is actually uh, done by uh, your marketing staff. But eventually, we yeah. see that a lot of uh, companies are uh, professionalizing the the business and it has come uh, it has been uh, transformed as a um, a discipline on its own so can you describe this what's happening mm -hmm. in the events management yeah. uh, discipline yeah, that's right you really describe it so well because in a lot of uh, companies it used to be events are undertaken by an ad hoc committee Yes. So each of the When you say ad hoc committee, it's not for a permanent. What? It's not a permanent unit or division okay. inside the, inside the company. That's right. Or it is just composed of several people, volunteers at that mm -hmm. from various departments and mm -hmm. okay, going to give you or you undertake an event project. Okay. But that is not the case anymore because they yes. have seen that how effective events had been giving concrete results mm -hmm. in terms of their product promotions and, mm -hmm. uh, and sales promotion. So, in each of the companies now, they really would have somebody in charge of their events mm -hmm. and they call them an events director or uh, an activation person who's going mm -hmm. to be responsible for uh, the overall event management of their products and services. Normally, when uh, I, I noticed that in some companies, the events group is under marketing. And normally, how, how big is this group? Because you mentioned events director. So there are events managers, staff, mm -hmm. normally from small companies to big uh, corporations. How big is this group? Well, it really depends on the company on how they're going to utilize um, events mm -hmm. as a regular as a regular program mm -hmm. for 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 their products. Okay. So before it used to be under marketing okay. and still is, I think. But there are some companies who will have a spin-off unit because simply they want to capitalize on events as really a regular tool mm -hmm. uh, in terms of really aggressively and intensively. Uh, selling and promoting their products and services. But I want to focus more on, uh, not necessarily on corporate setup, but events as an industry. Okay. I don't know if you have observed a mass rooming of several companies who are really existing or uh, making it as a mission that they have to do events. Mm -hmm. 
So, for example, we have seen a lot of trade show organizers. That's right. The same so with the... And there's a lot of, of a you, lot a lot of, of organizations. That's true. <laughs> they are okay. now mushrooming. And, uh, and they, they <coughs> focus on various industries. Some are... Uh, and I noticed there are a lot of niche uh, groups. They address the family, the babies, the IT sector, computer sector, travel sector. That's right. Because uh, just like any discipline... Mm -hmm. In events, you have to also have to curve your expertise. Mm -hmm. Like, um, there are events organizer who's really doing a lot of IT mm -hmm. or uh, financial sector events mm -hmm. or uh, companies or, or events company who are really focused on insurance or banking for that matter. So various verticals, but mm -hmm. uh, the more important thing, or let's say food, mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing is they, they have their own specialty mm -hmm. and uh, they become to be very, very visible in that industry sector mm -hmm. and they harness their skills as well as their net networking activities mm -hmm. and therefore they become more uh, effective in terms mm -hmm. of doing the events uh, in the long run. So there's also what we call um, expertise inside mm -hmm. events. So mm -hmm. in various verticals, you capitalize on your two or three sector mm -hmm. that you want to specialize in mm -hmm. and uh, that gives you a very good uh, and deepening of your network. Mm -hmm and for you to really understand what's happening into the industry mm -hmm. and also plan out what is the next big thing for that particular industry. Speaking of the next big thing, uh, I know, Ms. Norlin, that you know, with your decades of experience in, the, in events management, of course, I will not mention uh, the age <laughs> and the year, but uh, you have been um, uh, organizing a lot of events, and one of the most noteworthy would be the Graphic Expo. So, um, since that is a very successful uh, series of events, Let's go straight to the meat of the discussion. What are the trade, okay, let's not call it trade secrets. What are the secrets to an effective events management? <clears throat> okay, um, first of all, <clears throat> doing events is indeed, wow, it's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, so much investment are poured in into one project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that you have to first have your team. Okay. And the team should have <clears throat> the necessary skill sets. Okay. So they can really take on their project tasks and mm -hmm. assignments. And it's not just a matter of, you know, I get people and put them in, give them assignments. That's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. And as I said, events, we are, we are trying to promote events as a science. Mm -hmm. So there is really a science to mm -hmm. To event management now. You mentioned about a team. What should be the skills and competence of the of your team? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question because your team should be number one. They should have number one high. They should be very high in terms of um, uh, organizational skills. Okay, yes. And there should also be very high marks in creativity and innovation. Mm -hmm. They should also very high in uh, high marks in terms of uh, critical thinking, mm -hmm. because in events there's so many things that pop up. No matter how you really planned it, yes. there's no such thing as a perfect project and perfect events. Mm -hmm. There's so many things. No matter how you plan it, mm -hmm. there is what we call um, certain things that just happen. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a lot of critical thinking given those situations mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you are already in uh, what you call dangerous area mm -hmm. or times where, you were, where your timeline doesn't work mm -hmm. and your deliver deliverables are still not in order. So uh, your team has to be prepared by all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms. Norlin. <clears throat> um, we heard uh, that a good, uh, very uh, credible uh, team is needed, is one of the secrets to um, an effective events management. More uh, secrets uh, later when we get back here on Open for Business. Keep watching.
we're back on Open for Business and still with me is the Vice President Piera de Manila, Ms. Noreen Bapiera. You mentioned about a very um, uh, excellent team and uh, the, their skills should be uh, in events management as well. So it's not the typical um, uh, uh, events team that you get people anywhere. Uh, it's not an ad hoc committee. So what else are the secrets to an effective events management? Well, um, since events have its own life cycle in terms of uh, management, um, your team as well as uh, the way you do your you do your projects. Mm -hmm. um, they 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 also have to have orientation in terms of project management. And project management, as I said, there is what we call a life cycle, mm -hmm. meaning there are various stages, mm -hmm. and these various stages have to be fully have to be fully embraced and understood by the team members as well as your strategic plans in so that they know exactly mm -hmm. where you're going in terms of and what sort of um, results are we are, are we looking at at the end of the project correct now you mentioned miss norlin there is project management for every phase can you specify in terms of project management timeline, what are the phases in events management? Mm -hmm. So there are five phases in event management, okay. and we've been advocating this. Mm -hmm. The first one is you have to do your research. Okay. Because uh, you have to scan the industry mm -hmm. or the focus of your event. So you get to understand what's happening into the industry because your event is supposed to give uh, current updates and more or less trending on what's happening to your to that particular okay. industry so you have to do research okay. the second one is you have to do design how mm -hmm. are you uh, planning the event will take place so mm -hmm. you have to have uh, you have to make your design mm -hmm. number three is um, sorry ma'am but when you say design it has also has something to do with the industry that you are uh, creating because the design uh, should be vertical uh, sensitive? Uh, well, not necessarily. It is vertical sensitive. The design here that we're looking at is in terms of the structure of your event. For okay. example, mm -hmm. uh, you want a trade show format at the same time there are ongoing conferences to go oh, together. Okay. So you're designing the event in such a way that you will have a marketplace, mm -hmm. which is a trade show mm -hmm. or uh, a selling activity. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you want to understand and to educate the market and the people in the industry. You want to give them uh, what's happening into the industry, updates and trends and forecasts. So normally we do it through a conference or seminars together with the marketplace. So that's one design that you are trying to I do. See. For I example, see. in fashion, uh, let's say if you have a fashion sh a fashion industry, mm -hmm. of course, uh, your event wanted to uh, roll out what's, what's new, mm -hmm. what are the color forecasts, mm -hmm. what are the trends, okay. and so on. Wow. So you have okay. to create or you have to design an activity inside your event. Nice. So you have to do designing, okay. designing of your, of activities for your events. So we have research and then the design, design phase. And the third one is you have to plan. Okay. So you have to plan from A to Z, okay. from one until the end. Okay. So you have to do a lot of, of planning to do mm -hmm. and actually seeing through from the start up to the end of your event. And okay. all of those planning in every stages you have to make sure you have your deliverables spelled out mm -hmm. so that you know exactly what you are trying to achieve correct so uh, sorry miss yeah sorry miss norlin but is uh, is planning uh, the part to where you will also now um uh, think of the contingencies like for example the event is supposed to be outdoors but here in the Philippines uh, you know it, it rains a lot and uh, sometimes you don't expect uh, you know the weather changes is that uh, the phase that you have to place all your contingencies exactly so you have to have your plans uh, and that plan should cover everything 
that you can already foresee okay. or the foreseeable uh, events or whatever. In other words, you have to plan. You have to, to mm -hmm. think what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the next big, big steps you're going to undertake. Okay. And then the fourth one is, of course, you have to implement. Okay. You have to execute. So some people mm -hmm. or some of our team members, they're very good in execution, but they're not good in planning. You see? Oh, okay. So there are leaders who are very good in planning, but mm -hmm. very poor in execution. Okay. So that is another phase of, of events. You have to execute. Mm -hmm. You have to execute based on your plans okay. and based on your targets mm -hmm. and based on the on the results that you want, the desired results you want to happen okay. after your event. And of course, the last one is you have to have evaluation. So you have to evaluate what, what happened in your event. And that evaluation mm -hmm. will definitely take a look at what are your objectives, what you plan to achieve, and what sort of results you were desiring when you were doing or planning that event. So let me yes. summarize that. Number uh -huh. one is you have to do research. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have to do your design, event mm -hmm. design. Number three, you should have your plan. Number four, you have to execute, and you have to execute seamlessly. And the last one, you have to evaluate. Okay, that's perfect, Ms. That's Marilyn. the life cycle of, of event. And okay. you have to manage. That's why it's event management. Correct. So now, my next question, Ms. Norlin, is what are the most common mistakes of people who do these things in events management? Oh, very good question. Because a lot of people, they think doing events is, uh, is uh, easy. Mm -mm. And that is because they don't really understand uh, what it takes to, <laughs> to, to, to undertake an event. Mm -hmm. uh, we in Fiera, and I always tell this to my team, uh, when we start a project, we really go through the motion of doing the phases of event management. Mm -hmm. And we do strategic plans. So no shortcuts. No shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And and that's the only, that's the trade secret so that you will not, you will anything and everything that's going to happen in your events you are prepared mm -hmm. to face them mm -hmm. so people who who are so likely to make a lot of mistakes it's because there are no attention to details mm -hmm. there are really no mm -hmm. plans there are no overarching control mm -hmm. and mechanism to make that events really mm -hmm. happen the way it should be mm -hmm. or the way it should the way we plan it mm -hmm. so um, and I'm, on, I'm not only talking about activities, but I'm also talking about budgets and financial management of your, of your events. So remember that the only language that the management, our management understand is revenue. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these events, uh, they always look at revenue, positive revenue, as one of the successes, uh, success metrics of your event. Which leads me to this <clears throat> interesting question, Ms. Norlin. Okay, in terms of budget, assuming I am a company, I am a recipient of your events proposal. So if I am the recipient of the events proposal, what are the success factors or the success metrics that I will be looking for so that my, let's say, my investment of 250000 or $1 million in your event will be something that is uh, beneficial or revenue generating for me? What are those success metrics that you have to present to uh, a prospective uh, company? Well, of course, number one, you have to take a, look, uh, take a look at first the very objective why we are doing that event. Okay. Okay, and uh, simultaneously, you have to look at budgets. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we look at budgets, we, we really uh, examine the, the expense items because okay. we want to we want to really maximize our resources. Mm -hmm. I think that's common to a lot of companies, mm -hmm. and we just don't want our resources go uh, wasted. So uh, we agree 
uh, we we come up with the P and L, mm-hmm. no profit and loss, okay. in our events, mm-hmm. and we give it to uh, our management mm-hmm. or our client, and uh, we come to an agreement that this is the budget, mm-hmm. how the budget is being spent, mm-hmm. and we look at it on a per itemized basis. And uh, both parties will also understand the parameters of uh, even if you have the budget, it doesn't mean you're going to spend it, all of that. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I believe personally that uh, in our P&L, we should always have to have some savings. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, if you, if you give that to your client and mm-hmm. in, in a very honest uh, way of dealing things, um, you can always take uh, t- tell them about uh, savings of five percent, ten percent, or in, in that budget. If you have a budget of let's say uh, one million, mm-hmm. then you take a look at uh, you, you give your client saying that uh, we can probably save around ten percent of this if mm-hmm. we are going to do our due diligence mm-hmm. in terms of expending on a per itemized basis uh, certain things. In, in, in the project without necessarily um, taking a look at the results or or uh, without the sacrifice of results that we desire in that particular event. So, of course, your client or your management, for mm-hmm. that matter, if they see how expeditious you are in terms of managing your finances and, <clears throat> and also expending the resources of the project, mm-hmm. you would be really very happy having uh, savings, mm-hmm. bottom line bottom line savings. At the same time, achieving the results and the return of investments that you have specified in your, in your P&L right at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And then, Ms. Marilyn, <clears throat> we know that when we design an event, uh, to come up with a very successful one and something that has impact on revenue generation, there is lead time for each event. So based in uh, based on your experience, how long should be the lead time to let's say come up with an event to uh, make sure that the revenues would come in? One month, two months, three months? In your experience, uh, based on the various sizes of events that you have uh, conducted, what's the appropriate lead time for each type? Oh, of course, depends on the magnitude of your project okay. or your event. But uh, for us in Fiera, for our trade show, we always have a 10 months preparation wow. for okay. for an event that we are doing annually. Mm-hmm. And uh, for conferences, we, we have something like five to six months preparations. And for seminars, Mm -hmm. we always come up with three to four months Mm -hmm. gestation period Mm -hmm. because there is what we call uh, visitors build up or exhibitors build up. You have to campaign for exhibitors, you have to campaign for delegates. And uh, of course, uh, it goes with the revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to get revenue in order you have something to finance your expenses. So uh, depends on, again, uh, how big, how small is your project? Mm-hmm. But uh, for us to be very successful in our, even for small seminars, we always have a uh, 12 weeks gestation period. Okay. Yeah. So it's re- it really depends on the nature and, and, the, and how ma- the, the uh, magnitude of the event, as you mentioned. Exactly. N- now, Ms. Norlin, of course, Content is very, very important. Mm-hmm. So you don't just want to come up with an event just for the sake of coming up with one. But uh, I noticed that a lot of it are really knowledge-based now. So, and like for example, in your case, um, I think one of your seminars uh, would be on events management. So in mm-hmm. terms of uh, resources, in terms of content, uh, how do you find them? Uh, how do you um, design an event to ensure that you have a very, very good content for your event? I like your question. Thank because you. in any event for that matter, content is again number one in terms of trade secret. Okay. Your being an event organizer, you should be 10 steps away or advanced mm-hmm. from your audience. For example, how would you create a seminar or produce a seminar when your content is already 
being known by by your delegates. Mm-hmm. So there is no incentive for them to sign up mm-hmm. because uh, what you are rolling out is already they already knew about it or they already yeah. see it in YouTube for that <laughs> matter. Correct. Correct. So an event organizer is a person who does a lot of research. Mm-hmm. Research and also familiarity with the vertical that you are in. So for example, if you are into digital marketing, mm-hmm. well, we, we really go out mm-hmm. to other countries mm-hmm. to attend also conferences on this matter. Mm-hmm. Number two, we do our networking with experts, Correct. experts outside of the country, mm-hmm. because these experts or your conversation with those experts, they can lead you to somewhere mm-hmm. and they can share with you or you can invite them to come in into mm-hmm. your project and pay them the necessary professional fees and some mm-hmm. other things that goes with the engagement. Mm-hmm. The most important thing is you're bringing in fresh content to your event because that is actually the trade secret of any event. People will not patronize or sign up to your event if they feel there's nothing there. Uh, What else there is to learn? What else there is to see? If there are no new products in the exhibition Mm -hmm. that you are doing, why will they come? Mm -hmm. What what is it for them? What's the benefit for them? So events organizers, they do research. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they do networking with experts or subject matter experts in the field f- for them to be guided by the content and the, and the relevant uh, trends and updates in a particular in the industry sector where you focus your event. On that note, Ms. Norelin, what will people expect in your next events management course? Well, <laughs> this is going to be on November 21 to 23, okay? okay? So um, we, we always um, invite an expert mm-hmm. from, the U- from the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is uh, an event certified person and she's also uh, a professor in one of the universities. So we let her come in mm-hmm. into, the, into the course because she guides us in terms of knowledge mm-hmm. and what is there uh, to uh, to input. Secondly, we always stop experts here in the Philippines mm-hmm. to to join us in that particular uh, in that particular course mm-hmm. because I really believe that uh, for us to be relevant in our in our courses, we have known experts in the field to mm-hmm. join us. So mm-hmm. in this particular uh, course, we will have in November. We have a foreign expert. Mm-hmm. Then we have no less than our, our. To me, she's an expert into events. She's mm-hmm. a former DOT secretary, and uh, she's uh, Dr. Mina Gabor, mm-hmm. and she is a partner to that particular course. And she brings in her wealth of experience, being former DOT secretary, mm-hmm. and also a founder of Manila Fame Market Weeks, to wow, where yes. I am also. To where I am also trained. Okay, so, correct. Uh, that's always been our uh, ingredients to a successful uh, mm-hmm. event management course. Okay, so uh, we have a lot of uh, secrets uh, revealed here in Open for Business, and I hope that you gain a lot of uh, insights uh, in your uh, the next event that you will be managing. We hope to see more of Miss Norlin Babiera in the future episodes of Open for Business to give us more insights not only on events management and other topics including uh, digital disruption because as uh, Ed mentioned you have really transformed uh, Fera de Manila into one exciting uh, digital company as well. Our term of the week and our inspiring words when Open for Business returns, stay tuned. Our term of the week, you refresher of business terms to make you updated, more informed, and ready to make smarter business decisions. Our term of the week is sustainable event management, also called 
event greening. Sustainable event management, also known as event greening, is the process used to produce an event with particular concern for environmental, economic, and social issues. Sustainability and event management incorporate socially and environmentally responsible decision making into the planning, organization, and implementation of and participation in an event. It involves including sustainable development principles and practices in all levels of event organization and aims to ensure that an event is hosted responsibly. It represents the total package of interventions at an event and needs to be done in an integrated manner. We end our webisode with a quote of the day. Today's words are from Julius Henry Groucho Marx, an American comedian, writer, stage, film, radio, and television star. He was known as the master of quick wit and is widely considered as one of America's greatest and most gifted comedians. He said, I, not events, have the power to make me happy or unhappy today. I can choose which it shall be. Yesterday is dead, tomorrow hasn't arrived yet. I have just one day today, and I'm going to be happy in it. Join us again next Saturday, 5 p.m. Philippine time, for another episode of Open for Business, where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business, and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. You're on Facebook Live on Eagle News, and you can watch this again in the video section of the Eagle News AFB page and on eaglenewslive.com and also visit postinglive.com for news and updates on open for business. This is Caesar Valleos. Have a great day.